Thank you very much for joining us once again today and we are starting our discussions again related to the UE VAT law. We are coming back and starting our discussion related to the public clarification issued by the FTA. We all know these as of today 24 public clarification has been issued. The reason is basically there are a lot of gray areas in the law, wherever there are gray areas in the law which requires interpretation by the federal tax authority. So federal tax authority is giving clarification related to those gray areas. And the reasons of discussions of public clarification is just to share the knowledge and to interpret the law and related public clarification just for the better understanding of the law. So let's start our discussion with the first public clarification which is compensation type payments. To understand the compensation type payment we need to understand that usually is a one supplier and the customer. Supplier is selling Against this says supplier is getting money from the customer. In the language of law, this selling is called supply. We all know this that there are four types of supplies. One is standard rated supply, second is zero rated supply, third is out of scope supply and fourth one is exempt supply. These standard rated and zero rated supplies are called taxable supplies. We already know this. Against this supply, supplier is getting money from the customer. This amount, what the supplier is receiving from the customer, this is called value of the supply. This value of the supply in the language of the law is equal to consideration plus VAT. This consideration it can be in the form of monetary consideration, it can be in the form of non-monetary consideration. We know the value of monetary consideration. For non-monetary consideration it has been given in the I think it has been given in the regulation that the value of non-monetary consideration is equal to the market value of the non-monetary consideration. Now as we discussed there are two strings, two legs. One is a sale, second is a consideration. Whenever supplier is supplying anything and supplier is not getting any consideration we need to look into this. This is the taxable supply, exempt supply or out of the scope supply. If this is exempt supply, FTA will not ask any question. You are supplying exempt supply, you are not getting any consideration, FTA don't have any problem. Whenever you are supplying any out of the scope supply and you are not getting any consideration, might be FTA will not ask any question because there are no tax on the out of the scope supply ultimately FTA is not losing any amount. Yeah, there will not be any problem. But whenever you are supplying any taxable supply you are not getting any consideration from the customer then the question of deemed supply will arise. This question of deemed supply we all know this law allows us that up to 500 per person in the preceding 12 months we can give the goods or services free of cost any amount beyond this it will be considered deemed supply it will be subject to tax and we all know this at the company level the total value is 40,000 per annum in the preceding 12 months period any amount if the company is supplying anything beyond 40,000 during the preceding 12 month period it will be subject to tax if the company is supplying anything more than 1500 free of consideration 
sorry if the company is supplying anything more than 500 per person in the preceding 12 month period without any consideration it will be subject to tax as well so we can say whenever the supplier is supplying taxable supply to the customer without consideration then the question of deemed supply will arise and if this is going beyond the limit it will be subject to tax on the vice versa situation might be customer is paying any amount to the supplier and there is a no supply if the customer is paying any amount to the supplier without any taxable supply or without any supply to straightforward this will be out of the scope of the law it will not be considered a taxable supply the reason is they know they no taxable supply against which this amount is being paid to the supplier we need to understand that if the supplier is supplying anything to the customer free of cost the question of deemed supply will arise anything beyond the limit of deemed supply it will be subject to tax and if the if the customer is paying any consideration to the supplier without getting any supply it will not be subject to tax so this is the crux this is the crux of this public clarification it has been clearly said in the public clarification and the nutshell nutshell they said in case there is no supply and any consideration which is being paid by the customer to the supplier it will not be considered taxable supply it will not this transaction will not be subject to tax the reason of implementation of this public clarification the reason of introduction of this public clarification is business this is businesses usually make payments to compensate each other for any loss omission or wrongdoing now the question arises whether the vat is due on such payments or not general rule is if the payment is not consideration for the supply no vat is due on the payment we have just discussed if this is a, there is a no supply and payment is being made from the customer to the supplier then there will not be any vat on such transaction and this general rule has foundation this general rule based upon the article 2 of vat law and article 2 of the vat law says every taxable supply or deemed supply will be subject to tax they said the tax shall be imposed on the taxable supply and deemed supply now the question is what is taxable supply taxable supply is supply of goods and services for consideration if the goods or services are being supplied against the consideration then it will be subject to tax if the goods or services are being supplied without consideration then the question of deemed supply will arise if the consideration is there without any supply of the goods and services the amount will not be subject to tax the question of whether or not a payment is a consideration for its supply is a matter of fact typically it requires taxable to consider the underlying arrangements what type of arrangement has been made in between the supplier in between the customer based upon these arrangements we will be able to decide the supply exists or not if supply exists then we will assess the the next step will be to assess the taxability of the supply in this public clarification in this public clarification they have classified the whole public clarification into the four different sections. The first section is contractual payment to compensate for loss, loss compensation. Second is settlement of dispute. Third is finer penalty. Fourth one is damaged goods. These four categories has been introduced in this public clarification and we will discuss each section one by one. Contractual payment to compensate for loss. An example of such a compensatory payments are liquidated damages. Liquidated damages are predetermined amount. If the amount is predetermined, definitely the weight impact would have been taken earlier. So I said any contractual payment to compensate for loss. If this is a compensation for a loss like early termination of a contract or late performance, these are the out of the scope of weight because these are the compensation for the loss of earnings. But they said, in case hotel guest is cancelling the booking and for this cancelling, hotel guest is paying some penalty to the hotel. 
so they said it will not be considered a compensation for loss but it will be considered a session of a right because right has was given to the guest to stay in the hotel later on he is cancelling the rights against this cancellation a guest is paying penalty to the hotel so it will be considered supply it will be subject to tax the next act they said payment to settle a dispute so far as payment to settle a dispute is concerned there for bad treatment we need to consider the reason behind this what are the reason behind this what are the reasons of dispute and how it is being settled we need to consider all these arrangements so they if the payment is to enforce a contractual term there something was agreed in between the parties and action is being taken to enforce the contractual term then they say it will be considered supply it will be subject to tax an example they have given dispute regarding a price of the goods because price for the goods would have been agreed earlier and action they are being taken to reinstate the price so any payment being made related to this it will be considered taxable supply it will be subject to tax then they say damages or compensation for any loss payment in nature of damages or compensation for loss the payment is not consideration for any supply payment for loss of earnings a payment of interest in respect of late payment so there is no supply against this so it will not be subject to tax there is no supply against this it will not be subject to tax there is a supply against this because cession of rights so this session of rights will be subject to tax because the rights were given to the guest and these the guest is surrendering the rights so it will be considered a taxable supply it will be subject to tax here this is not out of scope supply this is a taxable supply the reason is enforcing the contractual terms of the contract here the payment is in return for granting a right if one party is giving a right to another party means this is the supply supplying the rights getting consideration it will be considered subject to tax it will not be considered out of scope supply the example is right to use the property fines or penalty these are always out of the scope there is no supply against this so it will always be out of the scope and the examples are fines on speeding fines fine for incorrect parking fine for contravening contractual term performing an unlawful act all these fines will be out of the scope as there is no supply against this it will not be subject to tax payment for damaged goods for the payment for damaged goods we need to look into this these are the pre existing terms or not if this is a pre existing term it will not be subject to tax it will be because the vat impact would have already been considered and price would have been adjusted accordingly and in case these are not pre existing terms then it will be subject to tax so they they have given an example in case the car is being given on lease there are some sort of damages to the car so it would have already been agreed and the price would have already been considered at the time of giving the car on lease so these are the pre existing terms so it will not be subject to and so far as there are no pre existing terms then uh, loss due to this event it will be subject to tax usually we are we are going somewhere then the, then the lot of a uh, lot of very precious things are being displayed sometime notes is written along with this if you will take the goods and in case these are being damaged it will be considered sale and you will be liable to pay so overall basis we can say in the pre existing condition exist out of scope supply it will not be subject to tax if the pre existing conditions are not existing then it will be supply it will be subject to tax in summary whether a payment is a consideration for any supply or not we have already discussed we need to look into the contractual and legal arrangements payment is a consideration that previously agreed term if the payment is being made for previously previously agreed goods or services it will be considered consideration newly agreed goods and services consideration or just previously agreed consideration okay, for granting rights for not exercising any rights it will be considered supply it will be subject to tax because supply is there in the form of rights in the form of goods or services in the form of cession of rights in the form of granting a rights in the form of cancelling of rights in the form of not exercising any rights if any of these condition exist there it will be considered supply it will be subject to tax moreover they said in the public clarification we should not consider the label what had 
we need to consider the nature of the transaction instead of considering what is the label of the transaction. So by considering the nature of the transaction, we need to assess this transaction will be subject to tax or not. Thank you very much for joining us. In our next lecture, we will be discussing, we will be discussing profit margin scheme. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for watching the video. Click on the bell and subscribe to the YouTube channel.